All right, now that we have some assets ready, let's begin adding interactivity to them. Come over to our objects and open the object player blue by double clicking on it. Since the blue paddle is on the left side of the room, I figure we'll use the W and S keys to make it move, and we'll use the arrow keys to make the orange player move. There are two parts to making this happen, events and actions. Events listen out for things to happen on screen, and then it triggers an action to be performed. So let's add an event, keyboard, and we're going to come down to letters and W. The keyboard event basically triggers every time the key is pressed down and then stops every time the key is released. We want the paddle to move upward when we press the W key. So we're going to come over here to our actions and with the move tab selected, we're going to come down to the jump category and select this jump to position. We we'll just drag that over to our actions and it opens up this little window. We're going to come down to Y and set that to negative 10 and we're going to check this little relative box. Also make sure this is applied to self, meaning the object itself. To understand why we're setting y to negative 10, you have to know how coordinates work inside of GameMaker. When we do graphing in math class, we learn that the x-axis goes horizontally and the y-axis goes vertically. We also know that the positive x numbers go to the right, negative x numbers go to the left, positive y numbers go up and negative y numbers go down. In programming, however, the y-axis is flipped so that negative numbers go up and positive numbers go down. The origin point, or 0, 0, is also set in the top left corner of a window, so all negative numbers are actually off screen. When we check this relative box, it is meaning that the values we have set up here are relative to the current position of our object. So basically what we're saying here is that when the W key is pressed, we will then jump the object minus 10 pixels on its Y axis, which sends it upward. If we had this relative box unchecked, this would then send it to the absolute coordinates of 0, negative 10, meaning that it would be up off the screen and it would then stay there and not move. That's not what we want, so make sure you check relative and then click OK. Now we need to set up a similar event for the S key. So add event, keyboard, letters, and S. We'll bring over the jump to position once again. And this time we want a positive 10 in the Y, set relative, OK. So now let's see this in action. To test the game, we come up to our toolbar here and click this green arrow, which will then compile the game and open it up inside of a window. Okay, there it is. Now I'll press W and we go up and S and we go down. And you can see we're going off the screen here because we've not yet added the interactivity with the boundary boxes that we set up earlier. So let me close this. Now I should mention real quick that this 10 pixels that I set up in here is an arbitrary number. You could really set any number that you wanted but I find that 10 pixels is a good speed for the paddle to move at. So I'll close that again. So now let's deal with running into the object walls that we set up outside the rooms earlier. And the event we're going to use is a collision event, which will check when the paddle and the wall are touching. So add event, collision, which is above keyboard, and we want to select the object wall. And then we're going to come over to the Control tab and come down into the Variable section and pick the square icon that is Set Variable. Pull that over to Actions. We're going to set our variable to be Y and we're going to check the relative box. A variable is basically a property that has a value that can vary or change. Objects and other elements inside of GameMaker have many different built-in properties that we can manipulate. The object's Y coordinate is one such variable or property. Much like how we set the W and S keys to add or subtract 10 pixels from the position of our paddle, right now we are basically saying that when the paddle hits the wall, it will then offset its Y position by a value of zero. Another way to think about this relative box is as a plus or minus. 
it will add or subtract a value from its current value, whereas when it is unchecked, you are basically giving it that value. So hit OK, and one last thing we need to do quickly before we can make this work is come over to our wall object, double click it, and we want to set it to solid. We can also uncheck visible since we will not be seeing it and we don't need to render the pixels. Okay, click OK on that and let's run the game again. And now we see that our paddle does indeed stop when it hits the wall. However, you will notice that we have a little tiny gap up at the top and the bottom. It's not going perfectly flush with the wall. The reason that's happening basically has to do with the way we are moving our object. The smooth movement that our eyes see is actually an illusion. What we are really doing is jumping our object 10 pixels up or 10 pixels down every time we hit a key. When it moves close to the wall, Game Maker is calculating that the next jump would actually land it on top of the wall object, thus triggering the collision event, and so it is preventing it from moving that next bit of pixels. Because the object wall has been set as a solid, it will not allow other pixels to pass through it. Now we could do a bunch of calculations setting the size of our object and the amount of pixels that they move so that it evenly divides into the space between both edges of the room, but luckily there's an easier way to get our paddle to move flush up against that wall. So let's close this window and come back to our object event. We're actually going to delete this action we set in here by right-clicking on it and coming down to delete. And we're going to replace it with a few more actions. The first thing we need to do is determine which wall the paddle is going to come into contact with. And we can easily do that by just determining which half of the screen our paddle is in. And the way we're going to do that is by coming over to variables and we are going to select this second variable with the octagon icon. And this is the test variable. Actions that have this little octagon shape are conditional actions, meaning that they test to see if something is true and then they trigger another action to happen. So drag this over to our actions and we are going to test for the variable y position and we are going to check for the value room underscore height divided by 2. Room height is a built-in property of Game Maker and it contains the value of the height of our room, which in this case is 480. By dividing it in two, we get the halfway point in our room. And now we want to set this operation to less than. So now basically what we're testing for is whether or not the paddle's Y position is in the upper half of our room. If it, its Y value is less than the halfway point of the room which would be 240. This way we are t determining that it is touching the upper wall. Now we could just set this value to 240 rather than this complicated little formula here. However, by doing it this way, we're leaving the value generic enough so that it will work with any size room. If the height of our room, for example, was 320, then the halfway point would be 160, not 240. It's really up to you what method you want to use. 240 is certainly shorter to write, but by leaving it open and generic like this, we can use this same method for any future game without having to worry about adjusting hard-coded values. So click OK. And now we need to come over to our Move tab, come back down to our Jump category, and find this Move to Contact, and pull that over. We want to set the direction to 90 degrees, maximum minus 1, and against solid objects. The way degrees work in Game Maker can be a little confusing. Zero degrees is on the horizontal right, and going counterclockwise, you then go 90 degrees as straight up, 180, and 270 as straight down, and then back around to 360. Going clockwise, you can get negative values, so down is not only 270, it's also negative 90. So when we set our move to contact in the direction of 90, we are basically moving it straight up to contact with our object wall. This maximum basically is a limit on the number of pixels our object can move before it comes into contact with something. By setting it to negative one, we're essentially saying that there is no limit, it will just keep moving until contact is made. 
And of course, since the wall is a solid now, we want it to be against solid objects. So click OK. And so now basically what's happening is, when the paddle is going to collide with our object wall, it will then see if it is in the upper half of the room. If it is, it will then continue to move upward until it comes flush into contact with the wall. All that's left is then to set up the actions for when it touches the bottom wall. We don't necessarily have to repeat everything we just did here. Let's go over to Control, and this time we want to select this Else. Drag that over, and basically what Else does is it checks the previous condition, and if this is not being met, then it will do something else. Come back over to Move, and select another Move to Contact, and this time the direction we want is 270, which is straight down. Click OK. So basically what we have here, since we only have two walls, we only need to check these two conditions. If it is in the upper half of the room, then it must be touching the upper wall. So move in the upward direction until it comes into contact. Otherwise, we must assume then it is in the lower half of the room, so move downward until it comes into contact. I should quickly mention that these little conditional actions with the octagons only directly affect the action beneath them. Later on, we might come into a situation where we'll want multiple actions to trigger with each condition, and the way we would set that up is over here using these blocks, but we won't get into that right now. So, now that we've got this, let's test the game again. And this time we see that our paddle moves right flush with the edge of the room, which is exactly what we want. So now let's quickly set up our orange paddle. I'm going to leave the blue one open and double click the orange. And it's going to be very similar. Let's add event, keyboard, and this time we are going to select the up key. We want to do our jump to position, the Y coordinate to a negative 10 relative. Then we want to add event, keyboard, down, jump to position, our Y will be 10 relative, and then we need to set up a wall collision event. So collision, wall, and instead of doing everything we did in our blue object over again, we can just copy and paste. So re-select your blue object window, and holding down shift, I'm going to click and select everything. You can also just right click, select all, and then we're going to right click, copy, come over to our orange window, and in the actions box, right click, paste. Since both paddles act almost identically, we don't really need to customize any different values or anything like that. So I'm going to click OK on both of these object windows and run the game one last time. And test my orange paddle here, and it moves, and it hits the walls like it should. Blue paddle does the same. So excellent. We have movement. In the next video, we'll look at getting the ball to move and bouncing off of objects.